Herdis Paula uses her 15 plus years experience from C-suite and VP positions to share with you how she got from hiding in bathrooms with her Blackberry in search for success to having a 360 degree success in work and life following the principles of self-leadership. How to have 360 degree success following the principles of self-leadership with Herdis Paula. It's the summer of 2010. I'm working as a CEO in a bank and I'm going on a summer holiday with my husband and my youngest son. It was a sunny and beautiful day, just about as good as we get them. Three hours into our seven hours drive, I'm still on my Blackberry, still talking with my boss, talking with my employees, arranging things at work, making sure everything would work out when I was on my holiday. And just about as one of those phone calls ended, my husband shouts at me. I'm taking you to the next airport. You can go home. There's no fun being on a holiday with you. This was tough. So I started thinking, what can I do? So for the rest of the drive and for the coming few days, I kept sneaking into bathrooms and restrooms on our way with my Blackberry <laughs> and sending and replying to emails. Such a fun holiday. <laughs> and one of those days when I was hiding in, in a bathroom where we had stopped, I, I got a hold of myself and I started thinking, what am I doing? I'm not really on this holiday with my family. Do any of you relate to this story? <laughs> I see a few hands. I mean, I thought I was so successful. I thought I had it all. I was successful according to all of these standards that are out there, but I was not feeling right. I was not feeling good with how things were going in my life. And as I realized that I was not using my time in full alignment with what it is that matters the most to me. So I started asking, so now what? What can I do with this new realization that I had made? Luckily, I found this quote by a person that I admire a lot, Nelson Mandela. And the quote goes like this. There is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that is less than the one that you're capable of living. This was big. This hit me big time. And as I read it over and over again, I kept stopping by the word capable. What am I capable of? It was hard answering that question, but even tougher was to answer the question, what do I want? I asked myself several times, what do I want? And I couldn't answer. And I started thinking about what is success to me, which success am I chasing? And as I was going through all of these questions, trying to get to know myself a little bit better and where I was headed, I came to the concept of self-leadership. And sadly, I was not leading myself. That was a fact. Self-leadership is really about knowing and understanding yourself. Know your capabilities, know what you want, where you're headed, and what behavior that you need to practice to support you on this path. So self-leadership to me is the key to help you have the success that you want however you define it, both in your private and professional life. And as I was going through all of this, I defined what success is to me in my life. And for me, it was my career, my community, my environment, my finances, my health, and my relationships. And I also realized that success in one of those elements should not be on the cost of success in another element. As I described to you before, when I was on this trip with my husband, I was successful in my career, 
but this was not the high point of my marriage, I can tell you that. <laughs> the only downside to this, when you start practicing good self-leadership, is that you have to stop blaming others. And that can come in handy at times, but with full self-leadership or practicing good self-leadership, you have to stop blaming others and take full responsibility for yourself. And even though it may sound a bit scary at times, it can also be very liberating. So I recommend good self-leadership. <coughs> and having worked as a COO and a, and a VP and having had various management positions, I started also to think about what has served me the best in my management positions. And in the last few years, I have been working as a speaker and a coach, and I started looking at what has served my clients the best. So I came up with these six things that I think matters the most when you're leading others. It's your communication skills, your self-confidence, the team that you surround yourself with, the strategy that you follow, your own attitude, and how well you develop yourself. These elements are all very important when you're leading others. So when I put these two circles together, I came up with a model that I have decided to call heart-based leadership model, because to me, this has to start with good self-leadership, and you have to lead yourself before you start trying to lead others, and this all has to come from your heart. You have to be yourself, you have to be authentic in what you do, and that's the best way to connect with other people. So start in the inner circle, start with leading yourself before you try to lead others, and do it heart-based. And if you work with this model consciously, as I have been doing for myself and with my clients, it is possible to have a 360 degree success, both in your private and professional life, and at the same time. There's a lot of things to this model, as you can see, and I, have no, I don't have the time to go deep into it, but I'm gonna touch upon a few points, or few elements of this model. For the self-leadership part of it, I'm gonna talk about your career and your relationships. When I work with various groups that I work with, giving presentations and, and with all kinds of workshops and, and coaching, we look at people's career. We look at the career or the job that they have right now. What do they like the best about it? What do you like the least about it? We also look at previous jobs, and what have been the, the parts of those jobs that people like the best, and what they have liked the least. And, and we ask questions and we, we dig into what kind of career do people want to have? And when people come up with the answer to that question, what it is that they want, I ask them, why? Why do you want that kind of career? Sometimes people come up with some answer that it looks good in the, in the eyes of others, or that's what my mom always dreamt of doing, so I'm trying to feel, fulfill my mother's dreams. So if I get some answers like that, I go back to question number one. What kind of career do you want? And when I get answers to the why question, because it really matters to this person, then we can go on and ask, how are we going to make that happen? And that's what I do with my clients in workshop and in coaching. We try to work on the how. What steps do we need to take? Is there something that you have to start doing or stop doing? Something that you need to change? And we work on, on making that career come true. When we look at the relationships in people's private life or in, in the part of their self-leadership, in our lives we have all kinds of relationships. We have neighbors, family and friends, and we map up all these relationships, and we look at how confident are you in your relationships, what are you giving into them, because relationships is all about both giving and accepting. And when we look at those relationships, and map them up and see how you're doing in those relationships. I also tease my clients sometimes and I ask them, what league do you want to play in? On what level do you want to position yourself? Because the people that you surround yourself with has a lot of effect on how you are doing 
And you also have a big effect or impact on others, other people that you are around. So if you are working on changing some things in your life and in your relationships, you have to choose consciously who you want to surround yourself with. When we look at the outer circle, which is about leading others, I'm going to choose those two elements to focus on. Your communication skills and your self-confidence. And the reason why I chose those two out of those six is because, according to my own experience and my clients and various researches that I've read, those two elements have a great impact or maybe even the greatest impact on how well you're doing or how successful you are, no matter how you define success for yourself. So when we look at communication skills, and in your professional life, you probably have a boss and you have co-workers, you may even have suppliers, or customers, clients, so you have all kinds of relationships. And us in your private life, we also look at those relationships and see how you're doing in them. And as a manager, if you work as a manager, this is extremely important because you both have to get your message across. You have to have other people listen to what you're saying. But at the same time, you have to be good at listening to others and not only hearing what they're saying, but really listen to it. So you have to listen with your eyes and your ears, your heart and undivided attention. When we think about the self-confidence in your professional life, I have met a lot of successful people according to all kinds of standards, but they're still struggling with their self-confidence. And self-confidence is extremely important because we are all fighting all kinds of obstacles, both in our external environment and also in our, in our internal environment. When I talk about external environment, I'm talking about your obstacles might be something like lack of resources, lack of time, lack of money. But there are also those internal obstacles that many people are fighting. And with lack of self-confidence, you may be doubting yourself. You don't have faith in what you're doing. So we work on that. And the good news are that self-confidence is something that you can strengthen. If somebody in here feels that he, doesn't, he or she doesn't have good enough self-confidence, that is not something that you cannot change. This can be strengthened, and this is extremely important, both for your private and professional life. And for managers, they need good self-confidence, because they have to be able to admit that they don't know everything. They have to be able to go to their employees, ask them for advices, suggestions, solutions, and allow others to own credit for what they are doing. So going back to this model that I told you about, and I'm using myself, and I'm using with my clients, I'm getting a great response, because people find this is very easy to follow. This maps up what people are dealing with, both in their private life and in their professional life. And I'm glad to see how well people are responding to the fact that we have to start by leading ourselves before we start trying to lead others. And this all has to come from the heart. So we have just touched upon a few points or few elements of this model. There's so much more to it, but we don't have the time. Uh, but what I want to leave you with here today are actually three takeaways. First, self-leadership has, has to come before leading others. I will not give you any discount on that one. <laughs> the second one is that 360-degree success is possible in your private and professional life and at the same time. But that is something that you have to work on. That is something that you have to be conscious about. This will not happen by chance, but by choice. And the third one is that this has to be heart-based. You will not succeed unless you're connected with your heart and, and connecting with others from your heart. So what I have done is, if you go to my website, herdispaula.com, you can download for free 
a self-assessment tool that I develop to help you evaluate how well you are doing on your six elements of success. And to the, towards the bottom of the page, there is a scale. So you, you get a score and you, you, you um, come up with uh, your score and how you can go ahead and work with this to increase your success. And also on my website, there's testimonials from people that I'm working with, blog, various tips and tools, products and programs. So I encourage you to go there and, and get your free self-assessment. I'm also on LinkedIn and various social media sites. So if you're interested in what I've shared with you today, you can find out more about it. And I'm also happy to tell you about that I have a book on Amazon, which is called Rekindling Your Spark, Better Strategy for Self-Leadership. And within the next few weeks, I will have another book up on Amazon. And that one is called Heart-Based Leadership, Five Steps to Follow in Working Life. But this is not really about me. This is about you. What are you going to do with what I have shared with you today? I encourage you to choose self-leadership. I encourage you to choose to lead yourself. And I encourage you to live the life that you for sure are capable of living. Thank you. Thank you.